Hello, everyone. Welcome to Science Live. We have a very exciting program here. We have our curator of anthropology, Aaron Baxter, talking about a project that is still ongoing and you can even participate in if you're really excited about this. Um, you'll hear this again at the end, but you can email sandals at dmns.org for more information. And while you're watching, whatever platform you're watching on, um, if you have any questions, please type them into the comments and we'll get a chance to talk to our scientists at the end. And with that, take it away, Dr. Baxter. Hi everyone, thanks very much. Thanks for being at Science Division Live um, and thanks for coming and, and for the invitation, Mitch. Um, I just wanna talk uh, really briefly about science, science and science sandals, I should say. And let me see if I can share my screen um, first. And I wanna talk about what uh, some students have been working on, the teen science scholars and some active research that they're doing. And again, like Mitch said, that you can participate in as well. Um, so with that being said, here are the ancient sandals. And this is experimental archeology. span I put in a really boring academic uh, title for this, but I think it actually matters asks how fun this project is, because basically what we're looking at is eight to 2,000 year old pieces of footwear. And you think, oh, footwear, blah, blah, blah. Everybody's got some of those. But these are beautiful, functional, fabulous, and they tell us so much about ancient peoples. Um, and we're going to learn about those in just a second. So here's some examples of the kinds of things that we're working on and the kind of things that are just down the hall from us that we're going to um, see students making replicas of in a second. So to give you an idea of the intricate nature of these, these are made with organic fibers, often painted. The mathematics of weaving these are extensive. Many of them have raised treads that would identify groups. So when you walk across the desert floor, you leave behind, for instance, um, information about who you are, if you're in group A or in group B and the like. They have decorations. They sometimes have toe jogs, which are meant to accommodate extra toes, which was a phenomenon that the leaders of the time period had a genetic abnormality that uh, made them have an extra toe. So like in this one, um, everyone copied it, not because they had an extra toe, but they were emulating those folks who were in power. And they're made with all kinds of different fibers, uh, things from yucca all the way down to cotton, and they had different sort of variability in how long they lasted. And we know lots about sandals of when they're made, how they're made, how to reconstruct them, but you see that thing at the bottom, that is blown out, it's worn down, and we don't know how long it takes to do that. That's a gap in our knowledge, and it's a gap in our knowledge that I think is really important, because if it takes you 15 minutes to make a sandal and it wears out in 15 minutes, that's no good. If it takes you two hours to make a sandal and it wears out in two hours, that's no good. But um, what it tells you is the cost benefit analysis. So really nice, lovely, good looking sandals uh, that might take a long time to make and blow out very rapidly aren't functional, they're probably prestige items. So it's gonna tell us about the social hierarchy of ancient past peoples. And if we can notice that in their footwear. So these little tiny elements are these what we're piecing together to learn about ancient sandals. And the, the people we're talking about are known as the ancestral Pueblo people. Um, they're the modern day Hopi, Acoma, Zuni folks who live up and down the Rio Grande in parts of Arizona and New Mexico. Um, but for the backstory for the folks who are making these sandals, they're at Mesa Verde, at Chaco Canyon, at places is in and around Colorado that you maybe have visited, those are the folks that are the sandal makers and they're the really sophisticated sandal makers of the time. And they're not just making sandals, they're actually depicting sandals on things like rock art. So here we have uh, photographs of really intricate rock art designs that are showing the significance and the sort of the prolific uh, ways in which sandals are represented. There they are some with those toe jogs that accommodate those six toed individuals and the like in the midst of all these other important phenomena happening around them. Things depicting hunts and gatherings and things like that. Sandals are integral and important and they don't often preserve. So we don't have as many as we would like but we do have a lot of them at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. And they're not just on rock art, they're on things like pottery and the like. So they really are universal, just like fashion is universal in our world. And they're all across the Southwest. And those little black dots are showing images of the rock art that I just showed you. So you can see them there across a, a wide swath of, of prehistoric Southwest. And they were collected, many of them were collected by a guy named Earl Morris, who worked up at Boulder at CU, uh, um, at the, at University of Colorado Boulder and who collected them. You can see his personal collection. All that has been donated to the CU Museum of Natural History, which my students have visited to work on and to learn about. And he collected them in places like those on the left, like Canyon del Muerto and Canyon de Shea, sheltered sites that would have allowed and preserved these perishable materials to survive the, the, um, the millennia in between then and now. 
But even though Morris collected them, dozens of them, he was probably the most expert on them of any archaeologist of his time, he thought we know so little about him and never got quite to make, writing the monograph on them um, that has since been rectified by folks like Kelly East Gilpin and the like, but we still don't know those things like about the where. So what my students are doing, my students, what these students are doing, they're not mine, is their list is the collection from the DMNS sandals. It's just in the room next door. Um, and we have these incredible resources at our in our hands to sort of look at, carefully measure, figure out what sort of um, uh, materials are being used. And we've come up with a way we think to learn about these ancient groups. And this is a seven step process. I'm just gonna go through it really quickly what we're gonna do. We're gonna learn about ancient Pueblo sandal making, how they did it, whether they were twined, twilled, or had a raised heel. We confess we're not really good at that last one. We're a little bit better at the twine and that's sort of the, the, the level of an intricateness of the, of the sewing. We're not making ones like those on the left, uh, but I'll show you what we are making. So we're, we're reverse engineering for all intents and purposes. Step two is we're getting help. We know we don't know everything. So we've got our archeologists, indigenous scholars, indigenous engineers, uh, experimental archeologists, collections managers, and, and a whole myriad of other people. And lots of folks in this museum who are helping and coming to visit the teens um, in, their, in their endeavors. We need more help. So we've been working a little bit with CU Boulder, but it's summertime, so we haven't quite gotten the response, but we're, we're hoping for from the Anthro and the Classics Club, but we've got folks from Barefoot Running Club, the Hand Weavers Guild of Denver, some museum volunteers and museum staff, and I'm going to plug this at the end. We would love some help from you, and I'll tell you how to do that in just a second, but mostly I want to tell you about what we're going to learn. Order supplies, so here's a 50-pound bag of yucca. I have been accused by more than one person of being a drug dealer doing this project, um, ordering hemp, yucca, jute, and sisal in by the truckload to sort of practice with this because we don't always get it right the first time and we need some materials to go through it. Then we're making replica sandals. Um, we're recording our labor, how, how successful you, how good you were at the beginning, how good you were at the end, how comfortable, whether we're making twined or toe jogged, we're mostly making twilled. Um, and then the students are doing it and we're gonna go see them in a second. They're measuring out the cords, they're, they're leaning in and sort of trying to make sandals that match their, their feet sizes. They're boiling um, yucca to see if it make it more pliable. They're watering it for long periods of time. Uh, also to make it more pliable, they're doing this with other fibers as well. And just trying to pull all of this together and seeing what works and what doesn't. And as they're doing it, they're making videos to show the process of how of, of their learning, as well as somebody maybe like you who would like to learn about it. Um, and this is all being recorded. We're, we're taking um, we're, we're being sure to record to both write it down because we do want to do a scientific project at the end. And we're also filming it. And eventually all of this is basically going to go up on social media so you can see this process and how it works, which is pretty cool. Uh, we're not good at filmmaking yet. This was early days, but we're getting better at holding the camera still, I promise. <laughs> uh, so that's Hannah making, making a twine. And that worked out that was that we walked over to the zoo just the other day. So the idea is a step six, and we're almost done, is that we're going to have videos of the scholars. So we recorded them talking to the students. So you too can participate in that. Um, and we're going to have um, readings. We're going to have, you know, uh, surprising noises that pop up, forms and instructions on what to do, places to get help and resources to learn more. And all of that is again gonna go online and, and, and then we're gonna terrain test them. And this is the fun part where we strap them on, we download an app on our phone that tells us the terrain type we're walking on and we put in the weight whether we're carrying something our own weight uh, and it tells us whether we're on concrete or sand or grass and how and we, we count the steps <laughs> did this just yesterday, um, and uh, this was fun so these are students at the zoo uh, running around in sandals we got about 6,000 steps in just yesterday it was really uh, really fun and effective um, and comfortable and they and generally they think it, it's very uncomfortable on concrete and they're really quite comfortable on off-roading so this is these are new insights that we got from doing things like experimental archaeology and finally we're going to collect this data we're going to look about the labor and production the skill set and the learning curve of the weaving, weaving process some students are really good at it some instructors are really quite bad failures and successes the production of fiber with original tools like bone awls that we're using their durability, and that's the key thing. That's the part we're really trying to contribute to, to archeology span because that has never been studied before. Um, and with the implications, like I said before, we're, we're gonna try to learn about the social stratification of ancient people 2000 years ago. This is one more tool in our toolkit to get at that. Identity, who belongs to who? Can we tell that from the treads? And how hard is it to do race tread? 
We want to reinforce the value of these museum collections, that these are things that have been in our museum for dozens of years, but maybe have never been looked at or looked at to this way because we've got new ideas, new smart young people thinking about them, and new technologies to help that happen. And then that, that collaboration, experimental archaeology, and citizen science is really the way of the future because who says science has to be fun? You can walk to the zoo. Um, so we can all be scientists. And the idea is, is that we're working on today, which is why they're very quiet over there, is that we're going to get a peer-reviewed academic journal out of this. So you too can be a part of science at, at, at the very least. So here's how you want to, if you want to help, this is what Mitch was talking about. And if you've got two seconds, what I'd like to do is walk down the hall and show you who these folks are that are going to be working with you if you chose to do it, but also who have done all of these kind of amazing things. So these are the teen science scholars, high school students from the Denver area who are supported by you all in the museum and who have been working on this for the last three weeks. This is their, they have two weeks to go. Um, and as I walk down the hallway of death, we're almost there. Um, you can see what they're working on and please do type questions into uh, the chat because they're gonna answer your questions and I'm gonna shut up. Um, so without further ado, here they are. I'm going to stop sharing the screen and I just want to show you the teen science scholars. Hey gang, hey. here they are and they're working. So you're on Science Division Live and I've just showed them all of the things that you have done. It's okay. Um, and if you guys want to just maybe go around really quickly and talk about what you're learning or what you've done, that'd be fantastic. Well, we're studying and testing the durability of the sandals. So yesterday we went to the zoo and watched how long, like tested how long they would last. And a lot of them made it through the whole day and some of them didn't, but <laughs> it was really fun to do. So did that yesterday. Anybody else? Uh, and then right now uh, we're making some of these sandals. These are plain weave sandals from um, around 500 AD to uh, 900 AD. We're making them the same style they were always made. So yeah. Here's what they're working on. So I guess with that, um, these guys are ready to take your questions. If you if you're ready, uh, Mitch with Q and A. Absolutely. So uh, don't see any questions online yet. We're on a slight delay. So if you're watching this, and you have questions, please put them in. Luckily, I have lots of questions. Um, so I'm curious, what was the most surprising thing about this project from your initial expectations to now that you've been working on a while? What surprised you the most? Man, it's really hard to do some of this stuff. Like these are really hard, difficult sounds to make. Like even these ones, like these just simple plain weave sandals are incredibly hard to make. Like, the, like they'll take, they used to take me anywhere in the range of like three hours. I've gotten it down to around like one to two hours maybe. But no, they're extremely difficult to make. And these are just like super basic, like bargain bin cheap sandals compared to like some of the crazy stuff they've made. So they had like super intricate textile workings. And I mean, it just really goes to show how great at weaving they really were. All right, awesome. And we have a question from YouTube, uh, which is, which materials are you finding most durable so far? That's a good question. So far, the most durable we've, or material we've been using is this, this hemp rope. It's so hard to like get it to like wear out as oh, like rather than like the yucca or like anything else, but like any type of like the rope that we've been using is, is the one that's been most sure you're durable. Like this one, I, since we went to walk in the zoo, it's like not even like that worn out yet. And I walked, I think like 6,000 steps or 9,000, somewhere around there. Wow, all right. <laughs> and. Uh... Yeah, how, how comfortable are they? Compare them to the shoes you were wearing before you started this project. Okay, so um, the- The bars, the bars, hmm? we can. Oh, um, well, they're not very comfortable, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, may, it mainly depends on what uh, material you're using, but I found that the rope is a little more comfortable than the yucca, just because the yucca, maybe it's just the ones I've made, but they're kind of pointy and like just, I don't know. It's it's not as comfortable. The rope, it's more like cushy in my opinion. Cool. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I have sat on a yucca before and I agree, not very comfortable. Um, <laughs> uh, so, and uh, Aaron mentioned that it's easier to walk on dirt and grass than it is on concrete. 
Um, was that what you found? I found it it was easier to walk on grass and dirt because on the concrete, uh, especially with the yucca shoes I'm making, sandals I'm making, you could feel like every rock under you while on the grass, it was more like you just felt like a flat plane. All right, all right. And for those of you watching, we still have some time if you want to put in your questions. We're on a slight delay. So if I don't see your question immediately, that's why. And how likely are you to switch over from uh, your modern day sneakers to handmade sandals? <laughs> Not <laughs> likely at all, honestly. <laughs> They said they are ready for Survivor. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right, all right, <laughs> all right. And what are what are the future plans? Where else are you going to walk? You've been to the zoo. Are you going to climb a fourteener? It's <laughs> <laughs> a good idea. Well, maybe. maybe. <laughs> We've only got one week, so I think we'll be in and around the museum. So if you come visit us, you can see some teenagers wearing some unusual footwear, if you'd oh, like. Definitely, yeah. Like to do that. Very fun. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. All right. So let's see. People are quiet online. I totally understand. Um, <laughs> you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you need to ask. Um, let's see. So is this what you thought science would be like? I actually never knew about experimental archaeology, so it was a very fun experience, and I'm actually learning a lot for this internship. Yeah, I you had no idea like, this is what science would be, so it just opened so much cool, like, it just opened my eyes to, like, look at science differently, so it's so cool because this is all so hands-on, which is something that I thought you were always, like, in a lab looking through, like, little scopes doing something just completely different. <laughs> Yeah. Definitely, definitely gives you a different perspective on archaeology and science and anthropology versus just reading books and studying the textbooks. You get out in the field and get to test things, and it's it's a different perspective. Yeah, that sounds amazing. And all of you watching, you can participate too. Uh, we have another question from YouTube, which is, uh, have you seen any examples from DMS or other museums of footwear for children? And is it, is it different? And if so, how is it different? Well, we've seen a couple of examples in our collection. We have um, some sandals that are definitely small and we think that they would have been used for um, children and they're made in, this, in the, this, the same way. They're just a lot smaller. So Mitch, one thing that I didn't mention was if you choose to participate, all you have to do is let us know and we'll mail you the supplies to do all of this. And then you just go online and learn how to do it yourself by watching these students teach you. And they've made a bunch of instructional videos. And they've also put up things like uh, Louis Garcia, who is a Pueblo uh, Weaver, videos from him um, and, and other folks who are helping us out. So you can kind of just go to online Ancient Sandal College at your leisure. Amazing. And once again, if you want that information, just email sandals at dmns.org, um, S-A-N-D-A-L-S, -S, and then DMNS is spelled like that. <laughs> yeah. So anyone inspired for a future project, once you solve this question of sandal durability, where do you want to go next? It's a big question, I know. Yeah, that's <laughs> a big question. Oh. Um, well, I'm not so sure, but I know that I want to go like within the lines of like anthropology and all of this, but I'm not so sure because it's just my eyes have just been open to so much things now, like ever, like so much doors have opened. So I don't, I'm not so sure because I never thought there would be different fields within the like just one thing. So I'm not so sure. That's that's actually a pretty hard question. <laughs> yeah. You're all very young. You have plenty of time to figure it out. There are definitely so many different career paths because I was looking up different careers that you could have in the museum and coming here before it was a list. It was a short list. And then actually working in the museum, there are so many different careers and jobs to take and different employees running everywhere. And you just it's interesting to stop them and ask them what they are working on. And so there's just so many different roads you can take that you wouldn't have thought of before, that I wouldn't have thought of before the internship. Awesome. We can all start selling these things. So. 
yeah, now you're master craftsman or on your way, at least. And for those people who aren't teenagers, there's a lot of people with lots of different backgrounds in the museum too. So even if you've just discovered that experimental archeology span is something that really interests you, um, you can get involved right now with the online Sandal College. All right, let's see. Um, I think we still have a little more time. If those of you who are shy with your questions online, Oh, I, here we go, here we go. Yeah, so, experimental archeology, span you're all super interested in that. You're all really good at making sandals. Mm -hmm. Has anyone tried running and jumping and dancing in these sandals, or are you just focusing on walking? Um, I tried running in these sandals. They're, they're not very, um, comfortable when you run and what's it, uh, when it depends on the way you strap also the ones I had strapped on the straps kept on falling off so the sandal kind of bent while I was running which is not something that should happen <laughs> for me when I tried running the front straps of the sandal came off so it was just like I was just running without the sandal at all it was just tied around my leg <laughs> <laughs> and I it's guess our goal. I yeah. Our goal someday is to do a Pueblo to Pueblo run and to do a, an, an actual race in these things once we get really good at them. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, that was my next question. Is, are, is the sandal falling off because that's just how they are or because you haven't quite mastered making the perfect sandal? A lot of, oh, I'm sorry. A lot of the sandals, they hold up really, really well. So most of the time they fall off due to the straps either being too loose or not being put positioned in the right place on your foot so if you get the straps right they will they do stay on for a good good period of time nice. so it's really due to our incompetencies not <laughs> any fault with yeah. that sandals. i would rephrase that to early learning and experimentation <laughs> <laughs> yeah and here's a great question have you noticed any changes in your feet since you've been wearing these sandals. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I think it really depends on which sandals you're wearing. So like I've made these, which these, this is a full cotton sandal. And this thing's actually super comfortable. So you're not really gonna see like that much change. You're not gonna get really many blisters, but no, it's definitely possible for you, for you to get splinters and blisters and something like this. Or with this one, I had the entire front portion completely blow out on me. So, yeah, did some wear and tear, not just this, but to my feet also, so. <laughs> Sacrificing for science is the name of the game, right? <laughs> That's right. Experimental archaeology, you've got to be ready to uh, <laughs> make your whole self. Oh, we have another one. Uh, what is the most challenging part of making the sandals? Starting it, honestly. The beginning. Yeah, the beginning, starting it, like the end right here. Because you have to measure your Research. foot and make sure the loops don't become pull undone. Pull out too, because they, they will pull out. So you have to hold a lot at one time, and then once you get past this beginning part, it's really easy to just go with the rest of it. But I'd say it's the beginning is definitely the hardest part. All right. I mean, that's a beautiful table full of ancient sandals you've got there. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. All right, I think we're running about out of time, but any final thoughts, anything else you want to tell the online world about experimental archaeology? You should try it sometime. That's it. Yeah, you try it sometime. <laughs> it, is, it is quite the experience. It really is. <laughs> that's, that's a ringing endorsement, isn't it, Mitch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, wonderful. Oh, this is been so great. Uh, Thank you forward. so much for having us. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we can't wait for all the uh, all of the for your big research paper, and maybe we'll uh, see you on the cover of Smithsonian. Maybe <laughs> we'll, we'll see about it. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Mitch. Thanks for everyone for tuning in. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone, and uh, join us next week for Science Live. This has been amazing, and of course, check out. The Online Sandal College, you can email sandals at dmns.org and just keep an eye on our website. We'll have lots more information about this project. <laughs>